All right, greetings again. This is Kyle with another art tutorial video. This time, uh, I'll be talking about how to do ANOVAs, specifically one way as well as two way between subjects ANOVA in R, the programming language for statistical pirates. Yar. So, before we get started, just a reminder that if you haven't seen um, these videos before, you can find them on my YouTube channel. Just search up Kyle Lu. I am I should be the only one with this pic lovely picture of Butters who is currently sleeping at my feet right now. Hey Butters. And uh, yeah, I've created a playlist for these if you want, ever wanted to see multiple uh, R tutorial videos in succession. So, first up, we need to start up R and import or otherwise enter in our data. And if you don't know how to import data or otherwise start up R, I highly recommend you check out my first video, which is an introductory video showing how to download and set up R. So as usual, I'm going to set up a script, tile these vertically, ta-da. Okay, so as usual, I saved my data uh, in an Excel file and saved it as a, uh, a CSV file, rather, sorry, which you can see here. Um, in this case, our data is contains multiple categories, including subject, which is simply just 1 through 10, uh, the sex or male or female, age, young or old, and various numbers for before and after. So let's go ahead and import that, which um, should be pretty easy. Just run that. Go to my file, let's see if that is. Enter. Perfect. Now that we have our data imported, Let's start performing a one-way between subjects ANOVA. So, an ANOVA is essentially a way to find um, if there's a significant difference in three or more uh, means. Uh, if you're if you're to do an ANOVA for just two means, then that's just simply a t-test. So, um, our independent variable that we want to check in this case is sex, and the dependent variable in this case is uh, before. The reason why it's called one way is because we only have one independent variable. Um, so one interesting feature of R is that you can use it to not just perform tests, but also just to show you uh, a summary data. Um, this, fee, uh, this code is simply just summary as well as whatever you named your data. So in this case, I named it ANOVA data. So if I run that, You'll see that for each category, it'll show various summary statistics like the minimum and the maximum, as well as the means. Pretty handy stuff. But that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is to perform an ANOVA. Now, ANOVA can be performed simply by using the AOV command, as, and, uh, as well as specifying what categories that you want the ANOVA to be performed on and the data. So in this case, we write AOV bracket before is our dependent variable, uh, and then the squeaky line or tilde to separate that from the independent variable as a sex. It should be noted that in R, whenever you enter in data, or sorry, not data, commands like this, it is always going to be the dependent variable, squeaky line, independent variable. So to help you visualize that, kind of like this where it's Y, squeaky line, X. So your dependent variable is always before uh, the squeak line in your independent variable is always afterwards. So if we run that, you'll see it does a simple analysis of variance on on the stuff that we specified. However, it's not showing a lot of information. It's just showing the sum squares and degrees of freedom as well as the residual standard error. If we actually want more information, we will want to do a summary of this ANOVA. In order to do that, we first need to define what uh, an ANOVA as a term and then just simply taught to do ANOVA of that term. So in this case, if I can do this, doink. so in this case, I'm going to define this term as AOV1. And AOV1 is going to be the command that we just did before. So I'm going to do that and I define it as AOV1. Now if I simply do a summary of AOV1, 
we'll see that we have a much more useful summary table showing degrees of freedom, sum of squares, mean. Yeah, where's going, buddy? Uh, F value, and more importantly, the p value, the coveted p value that biology students are always after. And as we see in this case, it is not very significant. We have a very high p value, so there doesn't seem to be a big difference in um, between male and females in the before treatments. So that's uh, one way ANOVA. And in, another useful feature of, of um, R is to have it show your means in a neat little table that for ease of um, use, uh, usage and visualization. So if you type in model.tables and then in brackets AOV1, which is, as you remember, we defined earlier, and then in brackets means, or sorry, not brackets, quotes means, and then end the bracket, what you get is a table of means where it organizes the categories in a table-like fashion, and you can see the means of each. So in this case, females tend to have a 9.1, and males tend to have 9.4 in the before treatment. So next, um, we can, so that's one way ANOVA between subjects, but now let's see if we can perform a two-way between subjects ANOVA. So two-way is named because we have two independent variables. In my data, in this case, we are going to use sex and age as our independent variables, and our dependent variable is going to be after. So we'll need to set up it's the exact same way as before in the sense that we need to set up a term and then do the summary of that term. So the term in this case is going to be AOV2 and then the command is where it gets slightly more complicated but it's quite easy to uh, memorize. Essentially it's AOV, so you're going to do analysis of variance and then in brackets we're going to have the dependent variable before the squiggly line and then after the squiggly line we're going to have the independent variable. So sex and then plus age, and then plus, the, this is if you're interested in doing an uh, analysis that includes the interaction of the two independent variables, then you can use this handy command where you type in that your two independent variables uh, between a colon. And this will tell it to do an AOV of not just the independent variables alone, but also include the interactions of these two variables. And then once again, you cap that off with telling you where you uh, what your data is uh, from, in which case we define as ANOVA data. So if you run that, uh, we'll see that we've entered that command. So now all that's left is to do a summary table of this. And as you can see, our summary table has shown that there isn't much significance in sex or the interaction. However, age alone seems to have a very powerful significant effect as it is found to be have a fairly low uh, p-value. You can tell because these are denoted by stars and these stars uh, go by the significant codes uh, legend down here. So two stars mean that it's significant to the 0 .01 um, sorry, 0 .01 uh, threshold whereas one star would be 0 .0 0.05, which is usually uh, the threshold that we're aiming for. All right, and lastly, if you want to get a table of means, you can enter in model.tables again, this time with AOV2 instead of 1. Same command with the uh, quotations around means. And of course, we get our various table of means down here. Pretty handy. Now, if you found significance in your two-way ANOVA, um, you'll need to do an additional test to actually find out where those significance lies in between the groups. And this is what where we use post hoc tests, post hoc meaning occurring after the event. So a very popular post hoc test that we like to use after uh, performing ANOVA is called a 2 HSD. And the command for 2 HSD is conveniently simply 2 HSD. Uh, and then in brackets, whatever it determines. So in this case, we're going to use AOV2. So if you type in Tuki HSD in here, then run that for my script. And here we see a Tuki comparison of means. 
what you're really interested in is this bottom part where it shows you your p-values compare uh, comparing every single group so we have old males being compared against old females that's not significant we have young females compared against old females close to significant values etc it goes all the way through the list for each variable and from that you can easily if these were um, very low values you, you could um, safely say that there is um, a statistical significance found between certain groups uh, within your data and that is pretty much it for how to do simple ANOVA tests one way and two way between subjects in R. It should be noted that your data doesn't have to be exactly like this. It could be various things. So maybe say you're testing drugs and you're testing, uh, trying to see if there's significance between A and B and C. You can easily do that and have varying numbers for each category and you can have multiple um, drugs. So it doesn't have to be three, it could be four or five, etc. So it's very, so as you can see, R can be very handy for performing ANOVA tests. And most importantly, it can do two HSD post hoc tests, which is quite important because um, programs like Microsoft Excel won't be able to do a two HSD test. And that's it. As a reminder, if you're looking for more R tutorial videos, I've posted a bunch on my YouTube channel, which you can easily find by just Googling Kyle Lou and looking for an adorable dog in my picture. And yeah, that's everything.